of the one of the really amazing treats about working on tested is the tested family, and the tested family is not a um, a solid thing. It is an amorphous moving target of awesome. Um, at any given day in the tested offices and in my shop, um, you're going to see the. I came home from a vac from a two week trip to find these giant hands in my shop just standing there, <laughs> waiting to clap for my arrival, um, and. The two gentlemen who are going to uh, take you on a wonderful journey of mechanical obsession uh, for this final final segment are two of the kindest, loveliest uh, humans that I have had the, the luck to meet in doing, doing Tested over the past five, six years now. Uh, and really their spirit is informed by just like what they're obsessed about, but also what you're obsessed about. And this is really lovely, is the shifting and trading of obsessions, because we all each really understand each other's, even if we don't understand it. We understand that there's an important thing there to foment and to give oxygen to. Are you guys ready? We're ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot wait for you to see the incredible invention by my friends <coughs> Jeremy Williams and Sean Charlesworth. Thank you. <laughs> wow, we got Thanks, a big Adam. step up from Meat Shields. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Jeremy. I'm Sean. And we launched a new show on Tested Premium this year called Bits to Atoms. Yeah, it's a show about making things. Uh, and, and it's going from the electronic digital world because Jeremy is a programmer and an electronics whiz, and I do a lot of 3D modeling and 3D printing. So it's going from that realm to something that you can actually like put in your hands and, and use. We've had a ton of fun. We started out building an electromechanical ghost trap from Ghostbusters with emitted smoke and sound. Uh, we made a tiny main cabinet that looked like an old 1980s toy. And we, then we put, we connected a pinball machine, a tiny little toy stoplight in a pinball machine to a real stoplight, because pinball. Right. Uh, so uh, some of, uh, I, I, one of the important things about our thing, and I think a lot on Tested, is like when we went into this, we really had no idea what we were doing. So this is a good example of one of our projects where we kind of get it, got in a little over our head. This is the thermal detonator from Star Wars. So it's a little grenade type thing that Princess Leia uses when she goes to rescue Han. And uh, there was a lot of things involved. We end up pulling in the whole tested family to work on this thing. It went into a two-part episode uh, because we were just figuring this all out. So we ended up doing 3D modeling. We ended up doing, uh, uh, Frank came in and made molds for us uh, so that we could cast it in pewter in Kishore's backyard. Adam, at the very start of the project, gave us expert advice because he had handled the original. So, you know, that's good, that's good uh, reference. So we learned so many things doing this, and, uh, and it was a lot of fun. One of the more whimsical projects that we've done was the four-player quadcopter, where we took a quadcopter and we hacked apart its remote control so that each axis was its own little handheld remote. So it took four people to fly a single quadcopter. Okay, right? So you got one person who's on throttle, one's on roll, one's on yaw, one's on pitch. I'm telling you, if you want a team building exercise, this is it. Incredibly hard. It took us an hour plus Adam coming in, literally wearing a captain's hat, <laughs> to lead us to victory flying through three LED rings. Yeah, uh, it was crazy. So, you know, this, this kind of led into our next thing uh, mm -hmm. that we also didn't really know how to do. That's right. So, that, that project led directly to what we brought to you tonight. Uh, this is a mechanical version of the classic video game Pong, which, by the way, turns 45 next month. Uh, we not only wanted to build it as a physical thing, but we thought, let's take it a step further and let's let the players control the paddles using the volume of their voice. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so there, w <laughs> once again, we thought this sounded like a great idea, but we had no real idea of how to accomplish it. Also, we should mention, this was kind of like a last minute thing that we came up for the live show. So we had like maybe a month to kind of yep. figure the whole thing out. Uh, so it was a little tense at first. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the first step was to turn the pixels of Pong into space, because we're dealing with the real world here. And it turns out that the, the best solution to that was something called stepper motors. Now, compared to traditional like electric motors, DC motors, uh, these things have been around for 200 years. And, and you give them power, and they spin, and you take away power, and they kind of slow down and stop. But you have no idea how much they've spun unless you throw more gear at it. Stepper motors, by comparison, they're much newer. They have a lot more magnets in them. And they're interesting because you send them these pulses. And when you send them a pulse, they spin, but only for about 1.8 degrees, like exactly. And you send them hundreds or thousands of pulses every second, and that allows you to control how fast they spin. But the real magic is you can count those pulses, and then you know exactly how far something's traveled and in what direction. And this is the kind of technology that gives us 3D printers, something we use all the time, or laser cutters, the robots that build our cars, and also our mechanical Pong machine here. So for instance, it takes 31 pulses for our ball to travel one millimeter. Yeah. And so we should also mention that we don't live anywhere near each other. Uh, Jeremy lives in San Francisco. I'm in Oakland. We'll meet at the tested office on occasion. So we both kind of like went to our separate corners and had to figure this out. So I had to figure out the mechanical stuff and how to actually make this move once Jeremy figured out how to drive it. So once again, uh, you know, stepper motors, 3D printers, we use 3D printers a lot, and I was thinking, well, the gantries, you have the X, Y, and you have a Z gantry uh, axis in a 3D printer, and would we be able to maybe make that work somehow? And a lot of the parts in a 3D printer, uh, rails and lead screws and stuff like that, would probably get a little unwieldy and really expensive <laughs> to build this thing. Uh, so we kind of was like, well, what other ways can we do this? So first I worked on the frame, and how there's a bunch of different ways we could have built the frame. Uh, we could have done wood, we could have done just regular stuff from the hardware store. Um, and, but we had such a short amount of time to do it, I knew it had to be like a, almost a one-shot deal, like this has to be the right thing like immediately. So maybe spent like two days researching parts. Um, and so we went with this uh, structural aluminum, which is amazing stuff. It's like, it's like uh, a rector set uh, deluxe. Um, and it has these channels in it, and it has all these special brackets and parts that attach to it, which allow you to uh, adjust things, move them around, slide things around easily, resize it, and it let us do a bunch of iterations really quickly. So while it was kind of pricey, it, it fit what we needed for this particular job and the time constraints we had. So uh, the other thing that we figured out was that I, I, I was really concerned about the the moving, how is this all going to move? So this is kind of familiar. We do have belts very similar to a 3D printer, but we found these amazing uh, specialized uh, little tracks and wheels that are meant to go in structural aluminum tracks. So not only do we have the frame and be able to move the parts around, but we had the track built in as well. So that was fantastic. Um, so once we got all that done, we got it together in our separate camps, and we had to bring it all together. Well, as Sean mentioned, we had a very short amount of time to work on this. And so the problem for me from a coding standpoint was I couldn't see the darn thing. I mean, I was programming a game without being able to see it. So I spent a lot of time uh, writing, you know, drawing it out and trying to figure out the angles and I just exercising a lot amount of faith that when we got together that it would actually work. Um, the only thing that I could really actually see working was the uh, sound analysis and make sure that we could convert sound to some kind of action. And I had a crack team of engineers to help me with that at home. <laughs> oh, that, that was supposed to play, didn't play. Um, anyway, we finally um, got together um, just this week. We finally put everything together and miraculously, it actually seemed to work. And, I don't know, Sean, I'm kind of waiting for the final shoe to drop here because this has gone too well so yeah. far. Um, what do you say we actually powered up and play a game? Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> All right. So Jeremy's, Jeremy's going to initialize this. It would be cool to play this and everything, but the last key thing is like, we're like, well, it'd be fun if we play right there, but we're going to have you guys play it for us. And if, we're not, if you're up for it. Are you up for it? Yeah. All right. And we're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not talking about like one representative. We're like talking like the whole audience. So yeah. we're going to fire this up. We're going to do some calibrations. And then you guys are going to make these paddles go. So 
All right, so what I need at first is just to do a quick level check. I need everyone to give me, um, let's say up for about five seconds. So like up, as loud as you can. Just one, two, three, up. Great. All right, now let's do the one side here. Uh, oh, yes, very good. So this is actually the custom circuit board that Jeremy designed and sent off and got printed for this project. So if you haven't figured it out yet, the louder you are, the higher the paddles go. Yes. So, yeah. All right, so now we should actually be split. Can we have that side give, a, give an up for a couple seconds? One, two, Just three. Sort of ah! Wow. I think maybe a little higher That's there. That's yeah. horrible. So we'll get this dialed. So also, that's crazy. Talking about building in the in the dark, it was a little hard to get a thousand people together to test this beforehand. So this is like this is like real live like troubleshooting here. So yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> so yeah, we got these mics here to pick you guys up. Okay, you know it could still work. It could yeah. still work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's let's give it a shot here. Um, Where's our paddle? Here it's it right down there. Here's our paddle, paddle of serving. All right, so. <laughs> All right, so. We're, we'll try going the five. We're going to have this side. We're going to serve over to you guys. The louder you are, your paddle will go up. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> oh, that was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was him. That was him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, taking you down from the inside. All right, all right. Yeah, so, all right, we'll, we'll be quiet. Here we go. Straight. Over to us now. That didn't count. <laughs> oh, so close, so close, so close, so, so close. So close. All right. Third time's the charm, I know it. Here we go. Yeah. God. All right. What do you think? So they're, they're, they're just getting warmed up. They're getting warmed up. Yeah. You don't think we need to change anything? Let's, All right. Let's try All right. Here, one we more go. Time. Here we go. We got yeah, this. Let's try one more time. <laughs> oh. Yeah! <laughs> one point. <laughs> oh! That was close. That was close. Now, do you guys want a bigger paddle? <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> yeah. Two, one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is this is too easy. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. Someone messed you up. I think, I think you were getting Someone some sabotage. There's some sabotage going on over here. They and it wasn't it me out. this time. Yeah. What is that? Are we at 3 2? Anyone I, keeping score? Yeah. I, I'm supposed to be. Yeah. What do you say? I, one more? Yeah. All right, one more. Here we go. Game point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so close. All right. That's, that's our Mecca Pong, people. Thank you very much. Thank you.